Good morning everyone and welcome back to Craft Eccentricity and it's Tutorial Tuesday today uh, with a couple of other things thrown in because first of all I've got to show you the haul from which we're going to do the tutorial we're going to do the tutorial and then at the end of the tutorial I'm going to show you a small haul that I got from Michael and Tuesday morning right so it's a fine art design team haul and project share first of all so he sent me a lot of spring easter items and the first one is a rabbit which i believe is going to be jumping out of his egg because that's what rabbits do they jump out of eggs and then i've got another cute little rabbit similar character there who i think is leaping out of a cracked egg all of these elements, you can take them separately and do absolutely other things with them. So that's why dyes like this are particularly useful. And there you've got a bunny who looks like he's standing on grass with eggs and you've got a little chick. So the chick, the egg and just the grass on its own can be used on a tag. So, you know, I always think about things for multiple uses. And here we have a bunny who has a sticker over his head, bless him, and a little Easter basket and some eggs. And of course, these have to be made up in order to be correctly measured. And then we've got another little rabbit, more eggs and another little grass patch and flowers. And then, of course, you can take out tiny little flowers like this and you can use those in other things. And then here's a lovely one because I love bows. That's an egg that's got a bow on it and that's a bunny that looks very, very happy. You can see all his eye layers there. So that's a really simple one to do. And then I think this one is a kind of like mixed media style ladybug. So I'm going to have to make that one and see what that one looks like. Try for that one next week. And then a Christmas one. Why not? Christmas all year round. And it looks like a pot with a flower and leaf arrangement. You've got a little Christmas cookie and there's a tiny little snowman there. And then we have, I'm guessing at this, I think it's a little girl. Oh, no, it's not. It's mushrooms. I can see the mushroom caps and the mushroom bases and pretty little butterflies there. So I think I'm going to try for the ladybird and the mushrooms next week because they're not all always kind of like obvious when you look at something like that. As I just said, I thought it was a little girl. And then we have another bunny in a little outfit and a tiny little bow there. And then we get to bags of bits because I've made this one, which is a bunny living inside an Easter house. And then I've used the um, four egg set, which is really sweet. And then for the tutorial, I've prepared myself, organized, you see, and uh, I've cut apart and this is going to be a fairy that looks like a flower. So this is the one we're going to make. But first of all, I'm going to show you my samples. So bunny in the house. And I have made that in exactly the same colours as the website. And of course, it's made up so I can measure it. This background paper here, I think is called Hoppity Hop or something like that. And I'm pretty sure it's Echo Park from Tuesday morning. So going from its little stovepipe out of the top there, I'm going to say that is two and a half inches across, no, two and three quarter inches across when made up. And then the height of that is about three and a quarter inches. Now you do get um, other little bits, sorry about that, my pickup tool is rolling around on me, um, where you can lay a path out in front. But I just wanted to pop mine up on foam and just make it 3D. So, as I say, I use the identical colours to the website, and that is the bunny in his egg house. Next up is the four eggs, and these are super pretty. And I did a slim line, and this one is the one from Surprise Creation with the scallop edge there. So, you get a heart egg, a stripe egg, a flower egg, and a starry egg. 
and I just did those in different colours. This paper again, Echo Park, Tuesday morning. I'll turn it that way, you can see it properly, but it's meant to go that way. So I'm going to measure an egg and they are all exactly the same size. So what have we got? We've got just shy of two inches. And then we have, let's do that, one and a half inches. So they really are a cute size. You could even put um, little bits of string in a bow and make them hang down the card that way so that they look like little egg ornaments, but really, really cute. Right, now I'm going to go away. I'm going to cut some paper and we're going to paper piece this one, turn it into a card. So I'm going to pause and race off and do that. Okay, so I've done all that and that is the bag of bits and I've cut pieces out and I've put them onto a sheet of blue card stock because hopefully you're going to be able to see that better and if I can pick it up without dropping it. I've done vellum for the wings. I've done, um, well, blondish looking hair. I'm using the colours on the website. Two layers for the wands because it's a really delicate little thing. So sandwiching two together is just going to make it a little bit more robust. These tiny little pieces here are the flowers and leaves for a sort of bracelet that goes around the ankle. And then we've got feet and that's all the pieces of the body. But what I did was I cut out several more dresses and the flower uh, backs there because I'm thinking I can turn the dress into a flower and these are little extra sleevey bits and uh, I don't know what I'm going to do with those but we're going to start paper piecing and I've also used a surprise creation um, decal edge uh, I think this is the six inch size die I'll um, put the link down below but this is crafters companion cardstock that I got on one of those boxes from Tuesday morning. So I'm kind of like looking at the colour scheme there and I'm thinking she may or she may not blend in nicely on that. So anyway, I've done that as my card mount, but now we're going to put her together. So I'm going to take the bits off that I know are her because all the other bits are just going to be sort of like fancy little extras. So I'm going to leave her little ankle bracelet right there so that I don't lose it. Right, so what have I got? Right, I've got legs and I hope the light's not too bad. I've got a body, I've got a dress. Now the head for this one, if I can pick my bits up, it will go into the hair first of all. Once you get these, it's really, really easy to do once you find your little bits. Can you see that little embossed area on the head? Try and get it in there. And that will go to that. So that's how easy that is. And then you can see the hair is cut away and you will know how to match that into that. So a head is quite literally coming out of the cap of a flower. So that's what we're going to glue first. So I'm just going to move the little legs and we'll do the head. And you can see there's a space for the eye there. What I'm going to do is cut a small piece of black cardstock and just glue it behind. And then she'll have an eye and I can use my, um, my lovely white AliExpress gel pen and just do a dot there for a highlight. But first of all, I need my Dollar Tree glue. And... You've got a nice embossed section. I want to get a close up so that you can see that. And in this embossed section here, that's where I'm going to apply the glue. So here goes. Hope that my bottle is working today and it is. Don't know how your weather was last week. I know a lot of people had snow, but we had the most awful rain. It must have rained for uh, 24 hours and it's a real pain when that happens because as you know we've got all our own um, we pump all our own water and septic and whatnot and if you get a lot of rain on the ground it can play havoc with it 
so I'm just squeezing that and then you can see what I've done is I've gone onto the embossed area and that is the eyebrow that little line that you can see just coming under the fringe now if I remember correctly um, excuse me a second she is bending down looking at a flower which is why I cut even more flowers because I thought she's got to be looking at something because she's sort of like kind of like that and now I'm just going to glue right onto those lines again the little um, flower back which is meant to be the hat now you can see I hope let's get in you can see that we've got this strong line around the edge and that is where my glue is going to go so just right on that edge if you're using Dollar Tree glue it doesn't really matter if you go over because it doesn't actually stain anything I mean it really is great stuff and uh, of course it's Dollar Tree so it's only a dollar right and now we need to match that up which is quite literally like that I will show you the back of this in a minute and then she's going to be looking down so she's a bit like one of those um, oh I can't think of a name is it Sicily Sicily something who did all the flower fairies but isn't that cute as I say it's going to need a little bit of black cardstock behind there but I'm going to do that right at the end now just to speed things up you can see I've got a line around the dress and that's the top of the dress so I'm just going to glue those two things together and come back okay so I've done that and I've got my sleeve pieces here which I'm just popping into my hand but if you look at that it's like that's glitter card stock you can see that the sleeve pieces are all embossed where you're going to lay your pink pieces and then her little arms will be glued behind like that will go completely up there so I'll just glue the sleeves and straight back so I just glued the uh, sleeves on there and you can see the dress piece is down and if I put it down flat here you can um, basically tell from where that is and the position of her head when she's popped in there let's get that correct because her head tilts she is looking down at whatever it is that she's going to do now I don't know whether I want to put a second layer of sleeve on just to um, sort of like curl that up a little bit and pop it down on there and I think I will I'm going to double layer her sleeve so I'll be right back right so I've double layered her sleeves and as you can see it just means they've got a little bit more dimension which I think is pretty and if you look at that embossed line there you can see that I'm slightly off now my glue is probably set already but of course if you do it you're going to be absolutely perfect and that needs to move down fractionally right I'm now just going to glue the gold on top of the white so that my uh what's it called yes my little starry wand is a little firmer than it would be otherwise right I've done my wand and it's a lot more firm and now we've got the space here what I like to do is put the glue I'm trying to remain in camera here around the um, edge of the eye you only need a little bit and then I take a small off cut I'm going to use my pickup tool of black cardstock and then you need to position it so that it's not kind of like poking out anywhere flip it over and then you've got a nice eye to work with now I prefer to um, put my glue around the eye area rather than around the edge of the black and then put the black down the reason for that is is because if you do it my way all you end up with is the black eye there 
But if you put it around the edge of the black cardstock and then apply it, you end up with the shape of the black cardstock coming through your card, which is something that you don't want. Let's, uh, it's really grey here. There we go. That's a bit better so that you can see that now. All you've got is a lovely little eye. But if you'd have gone all around the, the edge of the black cardstock, that glue line would be showing up through the face. So let's see how close we can go. There. So now you've just got a nice little eye. Now this is going to fit into here and you can actually see the emboss line there. Now her neck cannot go all the way down because if you did, she would look like her dress was on her face. So what I like to do is I like to start applying my sticky pads. Decide where about you want that, whether you're going to go underneath and let her hair fall down or whether the hair is behind the sleeve. Now, I don't know because I do not have an image of what's on the website. So I'm just going to play mine the way that I usually do. And that is have a good guesstimate. And I'm going to use a piece of foam tape because I pop everything up on foam pads anyway. And first of all, I'm just going to go with one at the top of the head. And then if I find my roll... I've usually got little bits and pieces that I cut up and somewhere I have a pair of scissors. Yes, I do. And yeah, now I need to get a long thin piece. I don't waste any of my little bits. I just keep them all because they're useful for putting down into um, other areas. So I'm going to peel off that little skinny piece that I cut. And now I've just got to decide how her head is going to go. Right. It's, uh, it's a real learning curve sometimes doing paper piecing. Because there are ways of doing things that can just make everything so much easier for you and it's just finding the one that suits the particular die that you're using and I think as she's kind of like looking down I think it's going to be that one I'm pretty sure when I put her feet in there that match up to that yeah and I can see the direction of her eye there. So now I need to just try and keep those two bits together while I flip it over and just be brave. <laughs> and now that foam pad is holding those two sections together. That will also allow you to move it around a little bit if you need to. But look at how sweet she is. She's really, really cute. Right, next up I need to glue on the arms which have got the hands attached and I can tell by the shape of the embossing on this piece and this piece that one arm is coming down which will hold the wand and I don't know how far down she's holding that, whether it's like that. I doubt that it's going to be touching the ground because... Uh, She's got her feet there and that wouldn't quite be long enough to be able to do something like that. So I'm going to stick the arms on and I will be right back. Right, so I've done that and you can see she's got her, her little arms coming through her dress. And if you look at the legs, you can see there's an embossed piece at the top of that as well, which matches into the curve of a dress. And once you've got that on, you kind of start to see that she's tilted down slightly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick the legs on using that emboss line and matching it up to the skirt. 
and also her little wand if I can pick that up I'm just going to glue that in behind her hands there because that's what she's holding and I'll be straight back right so there she is she's got a little wand she's got her arms and her legs on she needs to have um, that little flower sort of like anklet bracelet that goes, well, it's not a bracelet, is it? Because that goes around your wrist. But you know what I mean. She's got her little floral thing that's going to go around her foot. But what's missing now are the wings, which I cut to in vellum. And I'm pretty sure at the angle that she's going to be that the wings will go there. So... That is what the reverse looks like at the moment with all of its foam pads. I do like to use lots and lots. So these need to be positioned behind here. And because it's vellum and sometimes it can be a real pain when you use glue, it's better to use tape or to attach it with a piece of foam pad. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. And I'll be right back and show you. Right, so here you can see I've caught the two rings on a, a small slice. I'll put my finger in there, a foam pad. And now that needs to be positioned behind her so that you cannot see um, the foam pad. But you've got your wings at a nice angle. Now, I am using um, one of the straight lines on my board here to kind of get that where I want it. And, of course, you don't want to see your foam pad at all so about there and press and there she's got her lovely little wings attached and you can see that little bit of wand coming up don't want to drop her but all I need to do now is to glue on give it a good press because vellum doesn't like to be very adhesive as you know and I'm going to put a little bit of glue along the edge of her foot here just a tiny little bit because I believe that is where it belongs I do apologize I'm going to drop the camera down see how, see how better that is let's wiggle that around move that out of the way and then move her up and hopefully you can if I put my hand there you can see that little bit of glue that I've popped down so I'm going to get my pickup tool and I'm going to start putting the pieces in and I'm going to start with the leaves first see if I can get that into picture because these are super tiny but once you get them down on um, glue they do tend to sort of like pull off the end of your stick and then you're all right, if you know what I mean. So I'm going to try and catch them so that I've got a little bit of uh, leaf hanging off the edge. And then I'm going to go in with a flower and I may need to put down a little bit more glue so that her flowers are sort of like on top of those leaves now let's go in there so I would say that really this little bit is the smallest and maybe the trickiest particularly if you don't have a pickup tool so if I pick that up now I've got one little green leaf and flower still to add you can see she's got that little flower bracelet on her her ankle so I'm going to put in a little bit more green and a little bit of uh, flower I'm going to put the green up there I think I mean it is yours you know you can do whatever you want to with it you could put the uh, bracelet around her wrist if you wanted to right so I'll just fiddle that around I don't know what I'd do without my paper piecing tool I really don't I absolutely love it all it is is um is wax when it gets all yucky you can see mine's wearing down you just sharpen it with uh, a pencil sharpener like you do any other pencil 
Okay. Right, that's got quite a lot of dimension to it for a, a tiny little thing. So I'm just going to pick her up and, and show you. See, isn't that nice? She's got that little flowery band around her ankle. There's her wand. She's got the little bit of uh, black cardstock there. I am going to get my pen before I forget and uh, put the focal point of her eye in there. Now, uh, whenever you're using a white gel pen, warm the ink on your finger. See that? The warmth of your finger will make the ink flow. So that's a little tip for you. And then the point of light in her eye, I'm just going to put that right there. Only needs to be a tiny, tiny little bit. And I'll pick that up and show you. There you go. Just a tiny little point of light. Now, she's all finished, but because of the way she is, now, I don't know. Yeah, I'm going to put that there. She's kind of looking at something. Do you know what I mean? And I don't want her to be looking at nothing. Now, I did cut out all the extra dresses and these bits, and I'm going to glue them together and see if I can't get her sort of like standing in a mass of flowers. So I'll glue these together and then I'll come back and decide what to do with them. Right, so I've done that and I think they work really, really well because you've got to remember that's her hat and this is her dress. And if I grab her here, you can see it's supposed to be the hair that goes under that bit but I just think it makes a really really pretty flower now I'm going to have my card that way around and I've already got my pads down so that she's going to stick there and she's going to be three-dimensional and then I've got all these gorgeous flowers because as I said you know she looks like she's looking at something and therefore I just feel that there should be something there now, I might use three because I do like odd numbers, but I'm going to sort of like shape them as soon as I find my pickup tool. Yes, this this is a great thing for shaping things. So you can, you know, sort of like curl over if you want to. And some of these are going to have foam pads on and some of them aren't. Some of them are going to stick flat and the others I'm going to bring forward. Maybe I will use all four. Who knows? You know me. But um, she needs to be stuck down there. I'm just going to shape these. So right, you know me. I'm always watching the time on the camera because we've got the haul to do as well. <laughs> Before you know where you are, your day will be gone. So I don't know. I'm going to sort of like pile them up, layer them up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to peel the sticky pads off her and I'm going to stick her there and then I'm going to glue those two down right there and I'll be back. So I've popped her down and I've um, glued those two flat but I've decided I'm going to stick these two together so that they're actually dimensional. So I'm just going to put a sticky pad down there where it won't be seen peel the back off that and then I'm going to line it up sorry if I was off camera like that so she's got a nice dimensional flower to be pointing at and I don't know whether I'm going to cover her little hand or not so that yeah I think that's quite cute I mean, if you've got a little ladybird critter or something like that, or a butterfly, you could have that on there. Yeah, I like that. Does it need to be even more dimensional, though? Actually, I think it does. So I'm just going to pop another one on here and just go for it. Because, as I said at the beginning, she's kind of like, looking as if she's looking and so she needs something to be looking and touching well to me she does so there she is all finished she's got her wings her hair her wand a little flower bracelet 
and then she's got those flowers that she's concentrating on in the background there we've got that companion crafters companion paper that i got from one of those boxes put the lid on this here i'm going to raise the camera slightly there we go and that's from that die so i can get my fingers in because i've cut all my fingernails off again i'm getting all confident the weather's going to warm up and i can do some gardening but there, I just think that that is super, super sweet. And there is enough space there to put a tiny little hello or happy birthday sentiment. That would even look really cute with a tiny little cute bird on there as well. But I just think she's absolutely lovely. Now you can, if you want to, you can get your pens, you can put some shading under the arms. Um, highlight the legs or the base of the feet you can give it a little bit more dimension by adding stuff like that but I just think that's absolutely lovely right so there's that one from fine arts I'm just scooting my mess out of the way here in preparation and I also did the eggs that were sent to me and also the cute little rabbit in his house right so i'm going to move this stuff out of the way and i'll collect my haul okay first up tuesday morning and i got eight pots of fabric paint it's uh, an eight piece set it's montmartre and it's 6.99 now this is awesome i'm going to tell you why as soon as i can get the box open um, because not only do you get eight colours, but you get eight of the right colours, and that makes a change when uh, you get anything for this price. Fabric paint is usually really, really expensive, and it's quite fun stuff for doing tags and book covers. You can just stamp and colour, and this is washable. So you can do it, you can uh, let it dry. I think you set it with an iron, but look, you've got the black and you've got the white, which means you can make paler and darker versions of what you've got. And you can also mix colors. So that's really, really cool. You can get a whole range of uh, different colors using your blacks and your whites and mixing everything in. You can go pastel, you can go dark, you can create brown, you can create grey. Just a really, really nice set for $6.99. And uh, I'll be doing a book cover or something with those. I might even have some fun, actually. I think I've got a, a white t-shirt somewhere that I can use and uh, make myself a little something to wear in the craft room. So that was $6.99. And I do always recommend fabric paint because it can be horribly expensive next up and i've got a fancy pants christmas pack and i'm going to try and squizzle it around in my camera it's going to be upside down but those are the patterns that are in there you get a wood grain you get a, a sort of like slice of wood cut you get a little fancy pattern the plaid so that's what always draws my eyes you've got the gingerbread houses and the snowflakes and you've got the Christmas tree. This was $6.99 and it also comes with two felt flowers. And uh, those felt flowers can be used any time of the year, actually. And if I flip it over, you can see that it's a dark red, sort of like snowflake on the back. Now, one of the things that's always a bugbear of mine is embellishment. So I think for next Tuesday, um, using what we've got, let's try and make some, some good good looking embellishments that's what i say so that's my first one and it's 10 sheets of cardstock and it's two felt flowers it was 6.99 and apparently regular price is 12 dollars. i apologize for being upside down next up this was 3.99 and it's a pack of 25 sheets now, it's got its recommended price on here of $17.25. Uh, yeah, but I don't think I would have paid that. It doesn't actually feel like thick, thick quality card either. But it's one of those that's, you know, it's a little bit scratchy and it's pink, of course. And it's going to make a great base for a lot of stuff. So I've got that one. 
next up is this is one that everybody's hauling i do love alcohol ink but if you can get it as a card stock and it's only 7.99 this is actually 20 bucks in michael's and it's still available in michael's uh, but if you can get it for 7.99 then that's absolutely great because it means you haven't got to get all messy while you make something pretty now Obviously, great backgrounds for doing steampunky things, vintage style stuff. But these are also fabulous if you've got dies that cut apertures and you just want to see something that's going on behind. Then something like this behind the aperture is going to have a nice little impact. Also, you can cut sort of like huge chunky letters if you've got large alphabets. You can layer that on top, some glossy accents or triple thick or a bit of UV resin, and you've got an awesome looking embellishment. So I think I'm going to use some of this when, um, <clears throat> excuse my throat, we make some embellishments next week. So $7.99 and how many sheets? 36 sheets. No, 48 sheets, actually. There it is. 48 sheets. Absolute bargain. And it's a great weight. And next up is purple, because before you know where you are, it's going to be Halloween. And this is uh, basil or basil cardstock, however you like to say it. It's 25 sheets and it's 4 99 which I don't know how much does that equate to, about 20 cents a sheet or something. You know me, I've just done a tutorial, don't expect me to count. <laughs> right, next up is my Michaels and this pad oh glitter sparkly pretty beautiful this was five dollars on special look at the color look at those glorious colors that's a sort of rose gold aqua sort of like greeny blue and there's a darker gold let's get through them here look at that pink You've got sort of like, it's almost, how would you describe that? Vintage lemonade. It's sort of pink through to lemon. It's absolutely beautiful. You get three sheets of each. And then you've got that one, which is more of a turquoise green, but it's showing a little bit blue on my camera. And then you've got the paler gold. And then you've got that gorgeous, gorgeous baby pink. And there's three of those. And then you've got a beautiful sort of sapphire blue. So I don't know how many pieces are in there. 24 sheets for five bucks. And it's glitter. And I'm going to use every single one of them. And then next up, I got... Sorry if I've gone off camera. I've got three of these because these are absolutely glorious. So I've got three because what they are is a pound weight of smaller sizes of glitter cardstock. And they were only $2, but I've got one that's open. So I'll just move these out of the way so that you can see what you get in a pack. And of course, you know, I do a lot of paper piecing. Let's pull this out. So these are like perfect sizes for cutting little dresses and bows and tags. Just look at how pretty that is. That pale, pale pink. And then into that gorgeous sort of like almost a creamy snowy white. And then that beautiful blue. Isn't that gorgeous? If you find these, you should grab as many as you can because this kind of glitter cardstock is really expensive. And then you've got silver and then you've got one that can be used um, for Halloween or for tropical, you know, sort of hibiscus -y, uh toucan type things. Let's see if I can get a true shade. It's actually showing up darker. It's like an apricot orange. It's really pretty. And then we've got a lovely gold. You can always use bits like that. Like, just like the little ones that I just cut out for that fairy. You know, they're just perfect. And then you've got, this is a sea bluey green. But it still looks gorgeous on camera. And then you get it in larger. So I'll 
measure that six inches by four so if you just wanted a card mount you know for a small card you can just go straight in and put your tape on the back and you've got a glitter background and then these here are three i think they're three by three yep three by three but absolutely gorgeous so i'm so happy that i got three of those because they're going to last me a while really useful and for two bucks that just cannot be beat right what else have i got oh pick these up without dropping them all over the place you can also get these packs in uh, foil cardstock in these sizes but they were all sold out and those were also two dollars so if you spot those you should grab yourself some i got myself some stickers that were 50% off so these were like a dollar fifty but it was like you know the glittery bits that I was really interested in but just really sweet for Valentine's Day and those are stickers and 45 pieces so that was a good price and then this stuff which is absolutely glorious and I used a 50 I've just dropped one a 50% coupon um, to get this and it was I think 9 99 so I got it for like 5 50 and it's fibers 50 pieces and it's all pastels you've got gold in there let's see if we can get a close-up isn't that gorgeous and then you know you kind of like grab a piece of your glittery cardstock and and put it against that just gorgeous 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 i could wear all this in fact you know if you wanted to you could grab two of these and you could make fabulous curtain uh, tie backs in a nursery wouldn't that be pretty you just get all different kinds little bits of gold you've got daisies rickrack for doing your pastel christmas just absolutely love it and then I think I've got a pause to get what I uh, I got because I left them out in the kitchen because I tested them out. Hang on a second. Here they are. I managed to get myself three mica sprays. These were two dollars each and the colours might look shocking, but they're not. And they've got lots of mica in them. This one is pale pink and then that one is fuchsia and that one is teal so they're not as dark as they they look in the bottle they do spray true to color so i'll probably give you a squirt of those next week as well <laughs> we're gonna have some fun we're gonna make some embellishments and uh not gonna make the embellishments to use straight away we're gonna mount them on sheets of um acetate so if you've got any of that sort of like um cake wrap that i also use for doing shaker windows we're going to cut pieces of that manageable pieces we're going to mount all our embellishments on there and then we're going to package them so that we've got something on hand ready to use and hopefully just as good as you can get in the store but i've got to show you that again because it's just absolutely stunning 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 right it's been an extremely long video today nearly 45 minutes i think and by the time i finish talking probably will be 45 minutes but i do thank you for joining me today i hope you enjoyed the tutorial and that it was easy enough to understand and i'll be up tomorrow with my packaging dies to show you what you can do with those so have an absolutely awesome day as usual all links below bye